The purpose of this video is to show you how to edit your paper. Um, so I'm going to go through the introduction, which the introduction has three paragraphs and they are very prescribed from the instructions. So please uh, go to the instructions, go to the outline, use the rubric because uh, you will you you will lose a lot of points if you don't follow the instructions. And so, but this video will not address the rubric, but it will address the quality of the writing. And so, the goal of your writing should be to be efficient, to be clear, to be direct. So, um, in the beginning here, so this person is defining. Uh, the DV, which is something that you absolutely need to do in the first paragraph. So alcohol use disorder is a brain function impairment that includes uncontrolled behavioral tolerance, withdrawal symptoms, uh, so on and so forth. So that's fine, uh, but I would encourage you to cite the DSM-5. So it's really important that when you are talking about a diagnosis like depression, anxiety, alcohol use disorder, these are in the DSM-5. So you should cite them in addition. If you have another article that you're citing, that's fine. But the DSM is an important reference. The other thing, too, is I know that this student, this is a real student paper, I know the student probably got this expression, brain function impairment, um, from the Wang article. However, this is not something that you should repeat, right? So this phrase is not strength-based. You know, can you imagine sitting down with your client saying you have a brain function impairment? It's, it's kind of an insult. It, it just sounds like you're saying, you know, um, well, it's just, it's a bit of an insult. So that is not how we should describe it in person with a client or in writing. So I'm going to just delete that part, um, alcohol use disorder includes. So we just skip that that uh, phrase and there we have a better, more direct sentence. Um, other things, then the next sentence here is a little confusing. It's a little uh, kind of wordy, right? Military veterans, both during active duty and afterwards. What do you mean by afterwards? Uh, I assume you mean when they transition to civilian life. Um, or you know so, something along those lines, but I would I would rephrase this a bit, and I might say um, maybe active duty soldiers and veterans are at significantly higher risk than the general population to abuse alcohol. Now this sentence should have a reference. Um, but they didn't they didn't reference anybody so i'm i'm going to assume that they got this from wang but you want to be really careful here that if you have any particular sentence like this you don't want to just cuz you're stating you seem to be stating a fact how do you know it's higher risk right um, but then if you look in the next sentence this is where they provide the statistics to back it up they're saying prevalence rates suggest that military folks 42 or 43% um, misuse alcohol, whereas the general population is 30%. Okay, so instead of saying prevalence rates, I would, you know, it's kind of the expression that I'll use frequently, show, don't tell. So I might say something like, while 30.3% I might say, well, one out of, no, let's see, well, 30% of the general population abuse alcohol military veterans Forty-two percent of military veterans misuse alcohol. So some of the edits here are to make it more direct, more clear, more direct, less words. One of the goals or one of the things I'll repeat over and over again is how many of these words can you delete and still retain the message? While 30% of the general population abuse alcohol, 42% of military veterans of military veterans misuse alcohol. The other thing too is I would take off the three because if you round this, then instead of 30.3, you just say 30%. 
Now, if it says 30.6, you want to round it up to 31%, right? You want it to be accurate, but um, I think that's perfectly fine there. Um, not only are veterans significantly more likely to develop AUD, 55 to 68% of veterans experience PTSD and AUD simultaneously. So really, the, the word that you're looking for her, here is co-occurring disorder. So um, not only are veterans significantly more likely to develop AUD, you want to say, but 55 to 68% of veterans, and, and we're saying veterans in every sentence. So we know who the population is. We're not confused. So you don't need to keep repeating it over and over and over again, right? Um, not only are veterans significantly more likely to develop AUD, but 55 to 68% of veterans experience co-occurring PTSD and -A AUD. So we don't have to say simultaneously. Okay, then social workers are called upon to fight injustice on behalf of oppressed and vulnerable groups, drawing on their knowledge. Now, when you say there, you have a pronoun, but in the phrase before, you indicated two different groups of people, social workers and vulnerable groups. So drawing on their knowledge, do you mean drawing on the vulnerable group's knowledge or the social workers? We assume you mean social workers, but when you use the pronoun, it, it is unclear. So you want to be more specific um, when you're doing that. So drawing on social worker knowledge, skill, and values to help those in need and address social problems. It's a little wordy, but um, I'm going to leave it. All right. AUD, so this sentence is definitely wordy. AUD is a leading con contributor to the decline in overall well-being and the quality of life for veterans when they return home and can often lead to homelessness, mental issues, mental health issues, poverty, and other social problems. What I like about this is this person actually synthesized the literature a little bit. So what they did is they found two articles and found what those articles had in common, found what the crossover was between them, and then created sort of a small synthesized sentence. So I might revise this a bit to say, alcohol is a leading contributor I would just say alcohol use disorder reduces well-being and quality of life for veterans when they return home and can often lead to blank. So it just, again, it shrinks the sentence a little bit. You know, we didn't lose any meaning really um, to that sentence, so that so that's good. Okay. Um, understanding the consequences and risk factors of AUD among veterans. Again, we've said veterans 2,700 times, so let's delete that. Understanding the consequences and risk factors of AUD will ultimately provide social workers with the tools that they need to combat this public health crisis. All right, so that is paragraph one. Then we're going to go to paragraph two. Here, it gets a little confusing. Are there four interventions? Are there two interventions? As we continue to read, we figure out that we th I think there's two interventions. So intervention strategies used to treat AUD include the combination of veterans treatment courts and a co-occurring co disorders intervention, CBT with peer support, and personalized normative feedback. So you might want to, because there's so many, and you have this and here, that makes me think that you're combining them, right? The other thing, too, is when you say a co-occurring disorders intervention, well, what does that mean? Because there are no interventions that are named co-occurring disorders, right? But I think what you're trying to say is that they're treating both disorders at the same time, right? If it is a specific intervention like CBT or personalized normative feedback, it has a name, right? So in this case, it, do it doesn't have a name, so we might, like, we might rephrase that a bit. So... I might say three interventions, and you don't have to say strategies, it's a little bit redundant, because again, we want to make this as succinct as possible. Again, you don't need the word use there. Three interventions to treat AUD include veteran treatment courts, and I'm going to just take this out. You can go into more detail about what that is 
in the literature review, because, but this is just the introduction, so we're just introducing these things. CBT, again, I'm going to delete this because you can go into that greater detail in the literature review and personalized normative feedback and we'll just delete the word intervention because again it's redundant. Three interventions I would say that effectively treat AUD include those three. So now, now that sentence is much more clear. Okay. So then, then we say a little bit more about the VTC, right? VTCs offer an alternative approach to addressing, and again, we've said veterans so many times, criminal behavior. Um, when a co-occurring when a co-occurring disorder rehab intervention was embedded alongside VTC, improvements in behavioral health and criminal behavior incurred, including a decrease in illicit substance abuse among veterans. Okay. So that's okay, that's good. Um, it is kind of wordy, but again, um, it's vague here. When a co-occurring disorder rehab intervention, what kind of intervention? Um, what are the issues? Are they in general? Um, when a co-occurring rehab intervention was embedded alongside VTT, improvements in behavioral health and criminal behavior occurred. Okay, so we including a decrease in illicit substance misuse among veterans. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave that as is. But one of the other things that we need to fix here is this is not according to APA. You don't put initials in your APA reference. You want to delete that. The other thing is every time you see any squiggly lines, you want to resolve them. You want to get rid of them. So I'm going to assume that this name is spelled right. So I'm going to say add to dictionary because we want to get rid of all the squiggly lines because the squiggly lines tell me that there's something wrong, right? Um, your computer word thinks that you're thinks that you're doing something wrong. Okay, so then we have the most effective intervention strategy used to treat is personalized normative feedback. So what? So one, it is not the most effective of all time compared to the whole world. I think what you might mean is between the three. Maybe that one is the most effective among the three, but I doubt that you have an article that's compared the three, right? So I think the real thing here is that you're saying that, that this is the, the one that you think is the best, okay? So let's say that. One uh, effective, we'll say one very effective intervention no, just one effective intervention strategy, one, one effective intervention used to reduce AUD among veterans is personalized normative feedback. Heavy drinking among veterans is often used as a tactic to cope with PTSD symptoms. PNF interventions have reduced drinking and alcohol issues for young adult veterans, especially those who use alcohol as coping mechanism. So, um, Alcohol-related issues, like what does that mean? Um, again, I might just delete that and say, really, it's reduced drinking. Again, you, you can go into more detail in the um, literature review. This is also a condition. So I might start this at the sentence as a condition. Among young adult veterans who use alcohol as a coping mechanism, PNF interventions have reduced drinking successfully reduced their drinking. Among young adult veterans who use alcohol as a coping me mechanism, PNF interventions successfully reduced their drinking. Okay, so that's a little better. Um, third paragraph in the introduction. Risk and protective factors associated with the development of AUD include many different environmental and psychological characteristics. Again, you don't need many different. So let's just delete that, including PTSD. There is a direct relationship between alcohol misuse and PTSD among veterans. Good, that's a fine sentence. 
prevalence rates indicate that veterans are more likely to be diagnosed with PTSD and AUD due to such factors as increased exposure to trauma. So again, I'm going to propose that we just delete this um, expression because we could just start the sentence with veterans are more likely, right? Remember, ask yourself what is the least amount of words that you can use in this sentence so the sentence doesn't lose any meaning or significance. So let's just go ahead and delete that. And start that sentence with veteran, veterans. More likely due to exposure to trauma. Okay, while there are many intervention strategies used to combat, combat, combat AUD among veterans, again, we say veterans all the time. Um, P and F interventions are the most effective at reducing. Again, compared to what? This can't be all programs. This can't be like the most successful program of all time. Uh, so you want to say something else there. Um, maybe is an important one. P and F inter interventions are one of the most important and effective at reducing AUD among veterans. Um, the research question, okay, so we're gonna actually delete the research question. We're also gonna delete the hypothesis here. We only need an objective statement. So the objective of the study is to determine, let's say, effective evidence-based interventions used to reduce alcohol consumption and the development of AUD among veterans. That's a pretty good objective statement for this paper. Okay, so that is this video was an example of how to edit your paper and how to edit your introduction. Um, oh, I forgot to delete this part here, the combination of. All the crossed out words um, is just words that you don't need that you can delete to make this more efficient, more clear, more organized, more succinct. So uh, this video was about how to edit the introduction of your paper, the first three uh, paragraphs. The goal of your writing is to be more succinct and more clear. Okay?